Now, as we know, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, so it's important to dress appropriately as giant Cheerios. Not only do these rubber rings add a touch of much-needed glamour, they also stop them using their hands, which is strictly against the rules. Yeah, I know, there are rules. Surprising. Terrified of lawsuits, the general caters for all dietary requirements. So, whether you start your day with a dollop of mustard or a kilo of corn crackers... ..or maybe something lighter, like three abominable snowman's testicles, you can fill your bags. The proof of any pudding is in the eating, but especially one made from shaving foam and Ed Sheeran's nasal hair. I like a kipper for breakfast or some smoked haddock, but the thought of eating cold raw sushi in my pyjamas does make me feel... Yeah, exactly, madam. Mustard's an even worse choice. And his face says it all. No idea what those ones are eating, but clearly it's revolting. Meanwhile, at the raw onion buffet bar, things are going down a little bit better. And coming up a little bit better as well. Any of that Ed Sheeran nasal hair cake left? This guy's finished and he goes through. So does he. Time's up. Oh, and so is the mustard. So 83 munch their way through, but how many will be left after... Honeycomb? Like a branch of Ikea, these hellish hexagons have many doors. But only one will lead our contestants to safety. En route, they must avoid the demons and their evil firstborn, who looks like a whole bucket of trouble, doesn't he? Charmaine is first to go, but not before the general takes a moment to tell her off for having hair even nicer than his. Now, she's laughing now, but the general's a vain man. He will not be upstaged. That circle shows the location of the devil child, the Beelzebubba, if you like. But it's Shamin who's gone straight to Daddy, or Mummy, not for me to speculate. I don't want to gender it anyway. Now the whole family's here to ruin Shamin's day. I knew that bucket spelled trouble, but I didn't expect it would be used to shampoo a woman in chocolate before she was tossed into a lake. I mean, is this bullying? I suppose it depends how much you like chocolate. Our next challenger is also blessed with great hair, so it's straight off to the demon chocolatiers with her. This is the kind of thing that would have made that Willy Wonka film a lot more interesting. You know, the poor girl hasn't slept a wink since this harrowing incident, nor has she touched chocolate, which is great because it leaves more for the rest of us. And he's off, like a man in sudden need of a comfort break. I know only one portaloo was in use that morning, and if there's one thing that usually guarantees success in the honeycomb, it is a full bladder. And he's through. He must be relieved. Next up is Prior. Now, she knows that he's not a real microphone being pointed at her, but she's been well brought up and knows it's rude to shatter the dreams of a delusional bit part general. Prior enters the maze with the speed and determination of an old age pensioner in a post office queue. But while she might have all day, the demons have a small child to look after, so the sooner they can flush her out, the happier they'll be and the sooner they can get back to whatever it is they normally do. Which I think is just generally acting really weird. 